Hey, welcome back to Major Slack like Videos here for a stop for easy Elden Ring gameplay. You don't need to get good, you just need to get slack. And we're going to continue our Happy Face 3000 Spit Shine, preparing for the rigors of the next legacy dungeon, Lanedale, the Royal Capital. Uh, we got our Ore Blade up to plus 9, our Meteoric Ore Blade up to plus 9, that's good. But we can't enchant it, and we can't grease it, because the game says, well, the game just says no. This sword is already buff enough. That's right, buff enough. But we can still apply the Golden Vowel weapon buff, so that's an important acquisition we'll be making in this video. Two other important acquisitions we'll be making are two new Spirit Ashes. One of them, legendary and a veritable tank that's going to be great, really useful in the Dell Legacy Dungeon. And two new recipes, one of which I never really bothered to consider, um, Holy Pots which you can use to take out skeletons in one shot. I never really bothered to consider that. That completely el eliminates that whole two-step process when it comes to killing skeletons, you know? Um, yeah, all that and more in part 50 of my Elden Ring Prisoner walkthrough. Let's get busy. Major Slack videos. All right, first thing we're gonna do is reactivate our rune arc, okay, buff up all attributes by plus five. Next, let's go to the Church of Ella and buy the Missionary Cookbook 1. This will allow us to make holy pots. Holy pot, Batman! <laughs> yeah, holy pots. Purchase Missionary Cookbook 1, boom, and if you check your item crafting menu, you now have holy pots. This is made with mushrooms and tarnished golden sunflower. I know we're gonna get a lot of tarnished golden sunflower. Let's go, go, let's go. What's up, Mr. Momomo? -mo -mo? How do you know? Okay, ready for this? Yeah. Let's go there now to a farming spot I know. Right here at the bottom of the Weeping Peninsula. Castle Morn Lift. Let's go there now. There we go. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Lots of tarnished golden sunflower there. And we're gonna have to step out the door before we get on our horse. Down the stairs, and you're gonna push off to the north, basically. And there's some mushrooms that we can collect along the way, too. At least one right over here. And maybe another one over here. Yep, there it is. And then. Basically, you're going to go up this hill here to the north, past these sheep, and at the very top of the hill, they're hard to see, but there's a ton of tarnished gold and sunflower right here. Okay, collect as many as you like. I'm just going to do the one run. You do more runs off camera. Make sure you come here during the day, eh? Because if you come at night, there's going to be a, like a death bird boss flying around. And you have to deal with him. All right. So that's that. We have enough to make a bunch of holy pots. Make as many as you can. And while we're at it, I want to make some rainbow stones. Use the goods for markers. Alright, and make sure you hotkey your holy pots. Make them ready to go. And I also want to hotkey my rainbow stones. Done and done. Next! We could get another sacred tier right in the vicinity. Right here, we could just ride around. Those of you on consoles have long loading screens. You could just follow this wall here. And keep pushing. Just keep following this wall here. There's a mushroom and another mushroom. Great, that's a good idea jump down here and just gonna keep following the wall on the left until you can break through right here done and done now we're gonna push up to the west and the eventual destination is this location here the Kalu baptismal baptismal church and we're eventually going to use lose access to the map because they're gonna be in combat so you put a marker here and then put another marker right here, so you don't get lost, all right? There's a rune art, or rather a rune fragment. Let's grab that. 
All right, so going for mark number one. You could quickly grab this loot here. And watch out for the rats. And let's go for marker number two. And this will lead us up to the church. Just follow the road. Look down around. In here, all you have to do is jump off your horse and activate the gravitas skill on your sword. Do that a couple times. A couple, three times. Even if you take some heat. And you're going to wipe everybody out. And here is the sacred tier. Thank you very much. Next, let's go to the War Master's Shack. First of all, let me get rid of these beacons here. The War Master's Shack. We are going there to get the Golden Vow. Um, Ash of War. And while we're here, might as well do a little ingredients run. Go behind the shack, get a mushroom here, get some root resin here. Use that to make some grease. And head off to the east, generally northeasterly direction. Behind these ruins here are two more mushrooms. One right there, and if you just turn around, there's another one hidden in the bushes there. And just follow the cliffs on your right until you can jump up. Head due north, and here we are at my favorite smoldering butterfly farm. Might as well grab these while we're here. Top off our supply of golden butterfly. Finally, over this way and to the east. See, see that guy right there? He has the Golden Vow, Ash of War. All we have to do is just run up, hop off our horse, do a charge attack, and that's going to knock him off our horse. Knock him off his horse, and then use the grab the skill to, to finish him off. So that's the plan. Let's do it. Target. Jump off the horse. Strong attack. Off he goes. Grab the skill to finish him off. And that's all there is to it. Sorry, right, buddy. Nothing personal. It's just business. There we go. The Ash of War. Golden Vow. Done and done. Next, let's go get that legendary Spear Dash. That can be found at Tombsward Catacombs. Tombsward Catacombs is in the Weeping Peninsula section right here. Right, Tombsward Catacombs. While we're here, We can apply this Ash of War to, basically we want to apply it to the lightest piece of weaponry we have, which is the Hook Laws. Okay. Golden Vow. And choose Sacred. Now, not in this section, but in other sections where we want to buff up our or our Meteoric or Blade, we can just simply put this here, like this, okay? Now you see, if we two-hand our Meteor Gore Blade, check out the damage. The damage is 616, all right? Now, hook up the Hook Claws. <laughs> Cast the skill, switch over to your Ore Blade, two-hand it, check out the damage. It is now 687, okay? So we're getting a big buff from that. That's how to buff up your Meteoric or blade. Okay, they say we can't enchant it, we can't grease it, but we can do that. Alright, 
So that that's uh, we're gonna, gonna reserve for, um, well not reserve, but you know during our jaunt through Lanedale, the rural capital, we'll be using that frequently just to give ourselves some extra damage. Um, next, this section here. Let me just rest. This is full of skeletons. Skeletons have to be killed with holy damage, otherwise they don't stay dead. It's kind of a two-step process. Um, previously I was using... The Morning Star with the Sacred Blade... Ash of War on it. Which is pretty good, but you have to do this. And then that enchants your Morning Star with holy damage, but it only lasts for 20 seconds, which I find kind of... Annoying. <laughs> or, um, there's another thing you could do. You could kill the skeleton, and then while it's on the ground, you see this kind of glowy stuff, and you just hit it while it's on the ground. I also find that annoying, too. Um, I think the best thing to do is just simply throw holy pots at it. And that's like an instant kill. This helps out in a lot of situations where there's numerous skeletons waiting to ambush you, if you know where they are. Um, you know, it really helps out a lot. Let's start off by going here. The stone sword key. I love how from software, you know, they make the game really difficult, but they also bury a lot of resources in the game to help make it a lot easier. Stuff I'm still learning. For example, I never noticed that using the telescope, you can scope out places or locations with skeletons and find out which skeletons are going to pop up and ambush you. And they're always the one with the full rib cages and a weapon. It's a dead giveaway. See that? He's got a full rib cage and he's got a weapon. That's a skeleton waiting to ambush you. Just creep closer here. There's one around the corner here. One around the corner here. Same thing. Right here. See this? He's got a weapon and if you if you went around the corner you see it has a full rib cage. So now we know where the two skeletons are, are in this area. Right? Good thing to do is just creep up on the right side here, get that guy to spawn, lock on, and throw a holy pot at him. That's all there is to it. I love doing that. It's just instant kill. Now you don't have to hit him while he's on the ground, none of that. And this guy, just to demonstrate the other normal two-step process, we can one-shot these guys. But they won't stay dead. They start coming back alive. So you got to hit them while they're on the ground. And the ore blade's strong attack is perfect for that. Just hit the strong attack, and you wax it on the ground just like that, alright? So between those two processes, or those two procedures, we're going to go through Tombs Rick Catacombs and wipe out all the skeletons. And get Lutel the Head... Lutel the Headless Legendary Spirit Ash. And once we have that, everyone's going to go home, live crappily ever after. <laughs> um, so, we have a new cookbook. This cookbook will allow us to make Ranker pots. What are ranker pots? Let me show you. These are pretty good too. Let's make one just for demonstration purposes. Ranker pot. Okay, throw a ranker pot and it does this. These four kind of spirit things home in on the nearest enemy and mess him right up. Right? So that's that. Let's go back to Holy Pots. Okay, and... Lights on. Let's scope out the place. Looks pretty safe. Oh yeah, in here. There's a guy patrolling back and forth right there. You could just sneak up right behind him and do a backstab on him. That'll do him in right nicely. Stabby stabby. And then hit him while he's on the ground. Starts to revive. Down he goes. Okay, here's another perfect example. See that? Full rib cage. Not like a half broken rib cage, full rib cage. And I think I can see a weapon there. So that is definitely a skeleton waiting to ambush us. There we go. Bad skeleton. Bad. No, no, no. No reviving for you. Hey, 
and that's this area clear. This area is a bit of a clusterfuck. There's three skeletons here. There's one in that corner, there's one in that corner, and there's one pretty heavy duty guy down the hallway there. You just go rushing in, they're all gonna start pelting you with arrows and whatnot. Best thing to do is just bum rush in and hide in this area here. And you just have to deal with this guy. <laughs> Four times the charm. And peek around the corner here. And this guy's going to start sh start shooting arrows at you. What you could do is just sucker him into shooting his arrows, get his rhythm down, he shoots, and then rush out and whack him before he shoots again. And hit him while he's on the ground. And same with this guy over here. Done and done. Took some heat because I was distracted by my commentary. And in here, there's a guy patrolling back and forth. He's pretty heavy duty. He's got like a five hit combo. If you let him get, like, you know, out of control, he can do a lot of damage. I think we're just going to pop out and ambush him with the holy pot. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> Down you go. <laughs> Pardon my French. All right, and continuing down here, I think there's uh well, let's just use. See these rib cages here? These are what I call half rib cages. So that's not a skeleton that's gonna pop up and ambush you. It's gotta be a full rib cage and typically with a weapon laying on the ground. So this looks pretty clear. And this is the flame. Here we go. We'll take care of this guy easy. The flame tower room. All you have to do is hit that tower at the end with anything, even a ranged weapon. So we use our full moon crossbow. Hold down guard to aim and then just shoot. And that will bring the tower down. Alright, now on the way, there's a guy waiting to ambush you around the corner here. seeing any signs of weaponry. There, see the weapon? I see the weapon. See that? Scimitar right there. Aha. Busted. And that's pretty much a full rib cage, even though it's kind of like clipped in the wall there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice try. And if you notice, when I'm doing this like two-step process to kill the skeletons, what I do is I whack them, but that kind of brings your character forward so you have to like back up a bit to make sure that the strong attack will hit the guy on the ground there so that's why you always back up okay so we basically have to ride this little elevator up to continue but first let's explore the area and what do we have here that's a full rib cage Busted. Looks good, looks good. This room, I'm going to tell you in advance, there is one in each corner. Okay? 
There you go, full rib cage with the with the weapon. There's one in that corner, you can't see it. And there's one in that corner. I'll tell you what, let's see if we can get one of them to spawn just by going around the corner here. Come on now, you know you want to add a boy. We know where they are, so. Ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be bothered. <laughs> nice rolling, though. Good on you. Good on you. Same thing, we just sucker them out, get close. Why deal with all of them at once, you know? Strategy. That's enough out of you. Okay, so now we got it down to a dull roar. We know that there's one in the back corner. So we can just go up to this side and we can deal with these guys one by one. Go over him, get him to come out. Target, whack. Hit him while he's on the ground. Same thing. In the corner, get him to spawn. Target, whack. Hit him while he's on the ground. There you go, people. You don't need to get good. You just need to get slack. Alright, so that's this area clear. And in the process, I believe we picked up a ghost glove wart. Nope, not yet. I think it's upstairs. Alright, so now there's a guy up there waiting to ambush us. See him up there behind the little sparkly thing? He's waiting to throw fire pots at us. Um, I think the best thing to do is just speed run right across here, get a death blade on him, then jump on this thing here. And quickly attack him. And down he goes. Get yourself a golden rune, and you can hit this thing with the full moon crossbow again, just to get it to shut up. There we go. <laughs> Down it goes, and that's that. Scope of the situation. Half rib. That looks a little suspicious over there, but I don't think so. Looks good. I see a full rib case right there. And a weapon. Busted. Busted. There's another one. Looks like we got an archer and the guy with a curved sword here. Alright. Let's sucker this guy out. Oh, looks like the archer came alive. Nope, they both came alive. Okay, it's holy pot time. Come and get some. Still got three left. Come on, you know you wanna. There we go. And this guy, we can just rush zigzag towards him to make him... Haha, -ha, did you miss me? <laughs> Done and done. And some more great blood word. And here, I should have pointed this out in the beginning. There's a doorway back at the beginning that um, we can't open. It'll say uh, this is blocked by some kind of contraption, something like that. And this is what we are after. Pull the sleeper. And now that door is open. We can quickly get back to the beginning by just jumping down here. 
Yeah, running up the stairs. And this is the door that was previously closed. If you tried to open it, it would say blocked by some kind of contraption. And in here is the boss fight. This guy can be easily handled. Strike that. Manhandled. <laughs> With rock sling. And we can spawn our wolves just to keep them distracted a little bit. This is no problem. One rock sling and one good whack on the head. Whack upside the head should finish him off. Let's go in. Spawn the wolves just to distract him. Refill. Target. Rock sling. Two hand your sword. Whoops. Oh, we're good. And guard counter. I mean, I got a couple shots in. Never seen him do a combo like that. Anyways, um, as you can see, the rock sling brought him down. Like, took three quarters of his health. Should be no problem. You can just like run away and let the wolves distract him and. Um, send in another rock sling. I decided to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And that's that. And we now have... Lutel the Headless. Legendary Ash Remains. Use the summon Spirit of Lutel the Headless. Spirit of Headless Knight. Spirit of a Headless Knight who leads the Mausoleum Soldiers. Wields a lance and robed in death. Basically he... She, rather. Um puts the death blight on enemies, although very few enemies are actually susceptible to death blight, but she does do that. But she's a total tank, real tank, and she bops around all over the place. Um, she's hard to kill, so this is a great spirit Ash to have, especially for boss fights, right? Lutel sacrifice her fight, her life rather, so that death, sh so that in death she can continue to protect the soulless demigod until their revival, earning her the hero's honor of the earth tree burial. And I believe at this point, um, we should have... Do I have it yet? No, we're looking for Ghost Glovewort. And I forgot to apply my... Sp I thought I had one already. Either I overlooked it, because I was distracted by commentary, or... Um, should be one in here. Let me just quickly backtrack and see if there's something I overlooked. I'll just speed up the video. Okay, found it. Found it. In Tombs or Catacombs. Took the trouble to look all over the place. It is in here. From the side of Grace. Go down there, you use the Storm Sword key to open the, that area, get the cookbook. Then you turn left, go down here. There's the boss door. Turn right, go in here. Go around here and here's where um, what the strategy was to run out to the left take out this guy here then there's an archer here and then there's another archer over there and here is the ghost glove root that I overlooked because I was more concerned with taking out this guy down there so I completely overlooked it here it is ghost glove root once we could use this to upgrade Lutel the headless let's go do that now Because there's nothing better than a tank than a tank with a spit shine. Right? Let's just get outside. Go back to the uh, round table and have a little chat with Rodrigo, the spirit tuner. Now, this will cost a pretty penny, but it's well worth it. Greetings. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? I am indeed. She's such a sweetheart. And here we go. Special Ashes. Lutel the Headless. Requires Ghost Glove Word 1 and 1720 runes. One please. Thank you very much. 
Now, all we have to do is go after Ghost Glover 2, 3, and 4, etc, etc. I know exactly where to get Ghost Glover 2. That's coming up first thing next video. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, post the comments, stuff like that there. And I'll see you next time for some more Elden Ring. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, alright? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.